today is a good day to be dead. Zacharias, the ever-living, is an immensely powerful vampire of the Necrog bloodline that rules over the Forest of Shadows. Little is known of the life of Zacharias before he succumbed to the lure of the necromantic arts. He studied under the tutelage of Dieter Helsnicht, the infamous Doom Lord of the Undead, a necromancer expelled from Middenheim who now launched attacks on that city from a fortress in the Forest of Shadows. Whilst Helsnicht busied himself with tactics and raising armies, Zacharias took note of his surroundings. He saw they were not the first to work powerful necromancy in the forest. He saw strange flows in the winds of magic, which led him all the way to the tower of the Necrog Lord, Melchior the Ancient. For weeks, Zacharias observed the tower and its guards, plotting to break in through the crypt at the tower's base to steal the vampire's grimoires. He magically blinded the undead guardians to his presence, but was captured by Melchior's living servants before he had even made it inside. He was brought before the vampire, who recognized his great potential and granted him the blood kiss. The newly created Necrog was horrified by the changes his body underwent and swore to take revenge on his father in darkness. Knowing he was too weak to confront the ancient vampire, he bided his time and studied like a good pupil, and so began to embrace the power which Melchior had bestowed upon him. Each night, the two would rise, and Melchior would warn Zacharias that he grew bored of his company, and that he would probably kill him before dawn. But every night, the pupil surprised the master with his dedication and growing power. Melchior taught his acolyte everything he knew, but never let Zacharias near his precious Book of Nagash. Melchior was mad, even by the standards of Necrox, and would periodically fall into rages and slaughter his living servants, bathing in their blood and drinking it in a great feast of flesh. Zacharias was wise, and always avoided his master's wrath. It was during one of these occasions that Zacharias boldly crept into Melchior's chamber. There, on a great plinth, was the unholy tome. Unfortunately for him, Melchior was not as unaware as he seemed. He returned to his chamber whilst his pupil was still reading, and a great fight ensued. Invigorated by the blood of his dead slaves, Melchior was too powerful for Zacharias, who barely escaped with his life into the wilds, nursing his wounds. Deeply wounded, Zacharias fled into the Middle Mountains. For the following year, he was pursued by the minions of Melchior. From one cave refuge to the next he would flee, tired and severely emaciated from lack of blood. He would no sooner find a suitable secluded hiding place than his location would be discovered. Zacharias fed on wild animals wherever he could, but the constant running exhausted him. Finally, he stumbled into a large, dark cavern where he found a small niche deep inside, and there 
he fell into a sound slumber. Totally exhausted from the fight with Melchior and the constant pursuit of his dark servants, Zacharias's rest was to last for over a decade. During this time, a black dragon also discovered the cave. Unaware of the undead abomination which slept within, she made her nest there and, as dwarf dragons, gathered a small mound of treasure around her. When Zacharias awoke, his thirst was great and the sleeping dragon was a perfect source of nourishment. Finding soft, exposed flesh on the dragon's underside, he bit deep into the slumbering monster. The blood of the great beast flowed through the veins of Zacharias, empowering him with untold strength. Such is the might of a vampire that even a dragon is unable to wake from his deadly bite. Over the following month, Zacharias drank from the great beast, draining it clean of blood. In doing so, he discovered the secret previously known only to Aborash and his blood dragon kin. He became free of the thirst for blood and was filled with unholy power. Using the dark necromantic powers he had learned from Melchior, he raised the dragon from death and flew on its back to Melchior's hidden keep where he fought a great battle with his master. It is said that so powerful were the magic forces unleashed that the tower was all but destroyed. When the dust and the breeze cleared, Zacharias was the victor. Of Melchior, no one knows of his fate. Some say he was slain by Zacharias who drank his blood to gain further powers. Others believe that he is in hiding, licking his wounds whilst plotting revenge on his former pupil. Whatever his fate was, Zacharias claimed all of the magical wealth that his master had acquired and hoarded over his long rule of terror, including the powerful book of Nagash. Zacharias now rules over the forest of shadows from a rebuilt keep, studying the book so long denied to him, and both the orcs of the mountains and the people of the forest live in equal fear of the vengeance of Zacharias the Ever-Living. And now, on to the last of the most infamous Necrog vampires. Interlopers, you must be very brave, very stupid, or very desperate to enter my domain. It matters nothing what your reasons are. You will all die here, and then you will serve me even in death. Valdakir Ratep was a powerful vampire lord of the Necrog Brotherhood. An ancient vampiric horror, Valdakir Ratep fought and slew the personal champion of Mundred Skavenslayer taking the knight's enchanted sword as a trophy. Centuries later, in the aftermath of the great war against chaos, a warrior priest by the name of Gunther pieced together Ratep's unlife, his movements, his wars, his purpose. The enchanted blade Valdakir possessed was said to have the power of demon slaying, and Gunther hoped it would be enough to fell Otto von Gruber, 
the corrupt Elector Count of Ostermark and favored cultist of Nurgle. Thus, Gunther and his allies, the young Stefan von Kessel, would go on to fight against Valdakir's undead hordes, a host of long-dead skeleton warriors and shrieking tomb banshees. Delving into the dark caverns of the vampire's inner sanctum, the pair eventually came face to face with the Necrarch himself. At first, their opponent seemed invulnerable, rising back to unlife each time he was struck down. However, the two heroes were able to destroy the enchanted sarcophagi that fueled the vampire's protective aura. Stripped of his power, Valdakir Ratap was slain that day, or so it seemed. The War for the Nemesis Crown the Second Empire scouting party had been obliterated as swiftly as the first, but this victory did not set Valdakir at ease. While it was clear that the lackeys of Karl Franz were searching for something, he could not be sure whether that something was him. It was possible that the vampire's forays into Talapheim had finally drawn enough attention to merit a determined hunt. This was possible, but unlikely. However, one did not remain alive and immortal by taking reckless chances. Valdakir took wing to the haunted land of Sylvania. As one of the eldest of his kind, vampires heeded his call. Many of Sylvania's undead had been leaderless since the death of Manfred von Karstein, and were easily bent to Valdakir's will. Those he could not dominate, he deceived. Those he did not deceive, he simply slew. In a matter of days, Ratep had roused a mighty host, a host that swiftly descended upon Sterling. After setting the wheels in motion, Valdakir swiftly returned to his lair. The plan was working. In his absence, the undead host had soon overwhelmed the garrisons of Stufbad and Timvald. None but a fool would waste time hunting for a hidden vampire when so many undead were in plain sight. He was pleased. He was in receipt of plenty of raw material from the failed incursions into his lair. A new undead realm could yet spring from the ruins of the Eastern Empire, while the attentions of Valdakir's enemies remain fixed elsewhere. <laughs>